Coach Mossels, thank you for joining us, first of all. Uh, first question, how would you analyze the regular season, and how accurate of an indicator is that when going into the conference championship? You know, I mean, analyzing the season, I thought we, we had a really good regular season, um, had a great deal of progression, which is what you're looking for. I don't think you can look at the regular season and equate that to the postseason in, in the sport of, of cross-country track or swimming. Um, the periodization and the peaking becomes so important um, that, I mean, you, there's some things you can look at, but we're really looking to build into the postseason. So really the regular season is, is just a, an opportunity for us to get some racing legs, uh, to build on that, to lay our foundation. Um, but in the sport of cross country, we're looking more towards the postseason and peaking at the right time. You have had a long season packed with a fair share of injuries. How does that affect your strategy when going into practice and competition? Uh, a great deal. Um, you know, this will be the first time in, in my 27 years that, that we're not taking our, our postseason team to conference. We're going to race everybody on Saturday uh, because we're really not certain who our top seven are right now. We're, we're pretty confident in our top five, um, but that six, seven spot is, is wide open. Um, so this will be the first time everybody will race at conference for us in the 27 years I've been here. Um, you know, training-wise, it, it definitely impacts us. Um, you know, our, our secondary run was typically in the morning. Uh, this morning we had three folks, you know, doing some cross-training. Um, Dr. DeLuke and I have a, a banter back and forth and have for years. As I said, I've never seen a, a stationary bike roll out of uh, national championships. Um, so, I mean, you want to run because that's what you're doing. Um, but it is, you know, having an effect on us in that we're, we're doing some cross training with our injured folks, um, doing a little bit more grass training um, on some recovery runs to make certain that those that are injured can come back healthy and be ready to go in the postseason. Uh, Nikki, you're no stranger to injury. How does something like that affect, from an athlete standard, confidence and really <coughs> performance in practices? Um, it definitely messes with you mentally because you always think that you're not going to be ready. Um, like I had a stress fracture this summer and I was worried going in that I'd miss the first meet or I'd be out the first couple. So it's really hard to stay mentally in it but um, cross training is really important and just trying to get all your all the work in that you can to build your base back. Um, your season for the women is constantly changing back and forth between a 5k and a 6k course and with your conference championship being a six kilometer course how does that extra kilometer impact strategy both for you and from for the team? Um, I personally like the 6K more than the 5K. Um, you definitely can't go, well for me, I have a problem with getting out fast. Um, you just have to always remember that you have that extra .6 miles at the end. Um, so you kind of want to conserve a little bit um, and really work the middle of your race. Justin, how critical is pack running, and how would you describe the how the men approach something like that? Pack running is critical, and it's what every team strives for because you want the gap between your one through five ideally to be as small as possible because when there are large gaps, that's when your opponents uh, file in. And so I think it's especially important for our numbers three through five to be as close together as possible because those are the real that's the foundation of the team and when they are closer together that means less opponents are getting in between them and scoring more points so I think on our team we have about three different packs we have Brian and I who you could consider a pack we have to be as close together as possible and then our three through five they have to be close together while also trying to be bridging the gap between Brian and themselves and then our set our six seven eight eight also have to try to be running together and close together and I think mentally having a pack helps you because you know you have a teammate who you worked out with and who you do all your training runs with and you race together and you can feed off of each other so I think in a multitude of aspects that having a pack is very important. Uh, Nikki, on the women's side obviously there's an element of pack running but for you you're kind of known as being more of the front runner. How is that being the front runner of a team kind of impact what you do and what you kind of approach pack running with the, with the women? Um, I think definitely we need to close the gap between like me and Megan and Brooke, but our two through probably four are pretty solid. Um, and like Justin said, pack running is really important, but we need to close that gap 
and um, really like make sure we're together because every spot matters. Coach Mossels, you've already kind of addressed the health of your team. How has practice been this week leading into the championship? You know, I mean, uh, about as good as you can can expect. You know, we're we're I don't want to say tapering, um, but we're just trying to stay sharp. Um, you know, on, on Tuesday was our last really hard, strenuous workout, and it was only a handful of kilometers. Um, you know, our, our one through five on both genders really approached that well, um, and it was kind of more of an effortless workout for them. Um, but six, seven, eight, nine, not so much. So that that put some angst, you know, from a coaching standpoint, where six, seven are going to be at. Um, so, you know, I've been been very pleased with with where we're at this week. Um, had a good uh, moderate flush out day yesterday. Uh, kind of spit on the on the team a little bit, and they, they took that in, in stride, literally and figuratively. So um, you know, really pleased with where we're at. Um, you know, the, the old adage from Varsity Blues: "A haze in the barn," and we'll see what happens on Saturday. Uh, Justin, you're in the middle of your senior year, and you're going towards the end of what would be your cross country career. How would you describe your SJC experience? It's been life changing. I always think about all the time is how grateful I am that I picked this program because you never know what could have been if you picked a different program. Like there are plenty of guys that I know who are around my competitiveness in high school who have completely either dropped the sport or a non factor for their team. And I'm just grateful that I picked the right program for myself that has allowed me to flourish into the runner that I am because I would have been, never imagined that I could have been have enjoying this amount of love for the sport and with my teammates and then also the success and um, I'm just grateful that over the years I've been able to build healthy consistency under Bill's training and that it's allowed people like Brian and myself to flourish into becoming kind of the faces of the program. Nikki as we kind of come to a close we, we usually try to discover uh, with our student athletes, uh, what special talents that you possess that the world may not know about? Um, like anything? Yes. Um, I can play the French horn. I played it in the <laughs> middle school and high school. <laughs> that's nice. that's pretty good. French horn. Okay. Uh, that's that's probably been the best one we've heard. <laughs> Coach Mossel, same question. What special talent do I have that leads me to be a good coach or just a special talent? A special talent. Wow. I really don't possess any special talents. Um, I can't sing. I can't dance. Um, yeah, nothing. Well, as those of us that know you really well, you do possess an array of adjectives that can be used at any circumstance. Sure. We thank the three of you for your time, and good luck this week. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.